Every year, countryside shoots take place on estates and farms. And now the pheasants on the receiving end of those gunshots are being processed to help feed the hungry. More than 8 million people struggle to feed themselves in the UK. So the Country Food Trust has been formed to try and address this. Duncan Clark from Braxted Park in Essex is one of those leading the campaign. <laughs> The serenity of the countryside. This time of year punctuated with the sound of gunshots. The target, pheasants, bred for this very purpose. This is Braxted Park in Essex, very close to Chelmsford. It's just off the busy A12, but it feels a world away from the multi-lane carriageway. Like all estates, its business model is diverse. You can get married here, you can play golf, there's even a cookery school. But there's one thing that predates all of those, shooting. This place was first recorded as a deer park in 1342 and has been through many transformations. It's owned by Duncan Clark and his family. I think the shoot has gone on here, if you look at the game books, since the late 19th century, so for over 100 years. It's really in our DNA. I mean, it's such a wonderful community um, uh, activity. But Duncan Clark doesn't just see this as a country pursuit. Unlike some shoots where some birds are wasted, he is adamant they are eaten. If the, the game that we shot was not consumed, we'd all stop shooting. No countryman would continue to shoot unless the game that we harvested went into the food chain. Not satisfied with just making sure there's no waste, Duncan wanted to do something much more. He's helped form a national charity called the Country Food Trust, which helps the homeless and people who rely on food banks. We have a network of ambassadors. We recruit shoots and they raise money. And then the other things the ambassadors have got to do is get out there and talk to the homeless charities and the food banks to develop the demand. We then process the meat and that's how it all works. Those on the shoot take their positions. I'm told the shooters only aim for the birds that are high up. This is highly nutritious, high protein, low cholesterol meat, and it's there for free. That's the main point. The alternative is quite costly chicken. So that's it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of helping people because it's low cost. It's free. It couldn't be lower cost than that. But surely you've got to process it, though. I mean, there's cost in, in processing yeah, to turn a, them into the packs. Uh, absolutely. It's a cost to the people who are engaged in shooting. They're the people contributing it. After the shoot, the birds are taken to the Wild Meat Company in Suffolk for processing. Robert Gooch gives me the tour. This is, um, this is where the birds are uh, put in trays when, when they come from the chute and are kept here um, for perhaps two or three days um, at two to three degrees, so it's like being in a big fridge. Uh, well, it's full, isn't it? I mean, you've got so many different types of bird in here and, and here, here we've got what, some that would come from Braxton. Yeah, so these will come straight from the chute and they come straight here and then they'll be put up in these trays until we're ready to process them. At the Wild Meat Company, they mainly deal with game birds and deer. The meat is becoming very popular. And for a lot of people, it's a natural meat. So that's what we say, a wild and natural. Um, and the other thing that people quite like is the fact it hasn't been through a slaughterhouse. So as you've seen at Braxted, it's shot uh, in a wild, natural environment, and there's no real stress of being in an abattoir. And that, for many people, is why they like eating game. The meat is completely free for food banks and homeless shelters. The processing is paid for by those who go on the shoots. And also, very low on food miles, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we're, we, 
we've been delivering to Colts, the food bank, and other food banks in the area. Um, and so it's shot here and, and, and into, into someone's plate quite, in a quite local way, yeah. And this is the kitchen of Beacon House in Colchester, a homeless shelter which benefits from the Country Food Trust. Hilary Hannan is in charge of feeding everyone who comes through the door. How important is it for you to get donations from people like the, the Country Food Trust? Uh, my budget for feeding 30 people a day is £30 a week. A week? <laughs> yes. A week, right. And I spend £10 of that on milk. So donations from all places is really good. We get a lot of chicken donations and some of the supermarket supporters, but having something really different is going to be really, really good. So we get quite a lot of baked beans um, and tin tomatoes, so it's using what we've got, which is really good as well. Would you say that this kind of initiative is vital for places like Beacon House to function? Yes, I think so. Um, we, we rely on uh, donations of food from lots of different places, so something different coming in is really, really important for us. Yeah. And, and obviously, being game meat, it's, yeah. it's nutritious. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and this is what you need to give people a, a good warm meal. Yes. Something that has, yeah. has, you know, is, is going to be a, a good, healthy thing to yeah. eat. Yeah, so I mean, they, a lot of the guys on the street do survive perhaps on a lot of um, teas and coffees with a lot of sugar in, lots of cakes and biscuits, so something that's just good protein with little fat, I think is going to be really good for them as well. And well received so far. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> The Beacon House Homeless Shelter is run by Vivian Wiggins. Protein is what people need to build up muscle. We have a nurse here um, and she's always making sure people are keeping healthy. So the good thing about the Country Food Trust is it's, what, it's a missing part of what we already had. Um, and it's local, it's Essex, and I'm a great believer in this is a, an Essex community initiative for, with one part of Essex doing one thing, supporting another part of Essex. We're all the same community. What was that like then? Was it nice? Yummy, really tasty. Well, that's my kind of food. Do you think it's great that there's a, an initiative where you get that food brought to places like Beacon House? Yeah, I do. And it's nice because every day is something different. I mean, there's always fresh vegetables or fresh salad and fresh fruit. So people that come here do eat very healthily if they wish to. I mean, people are needy. People need to eat on a daily basis. It's cold weather, need something warm inside them. So it's very important. And how important is Beacon House to you? Very. That's been my lifeline. I've been on the streets for about a month now. And if it wasn't for Beacon House, I don't know what I'd do myself during the day. The Trust is continuing to expand and getting more shoots involved across the country to help to do their bit for people in food poverty. Do you think this kind of bridges the gap between the countryside and, and other parts of the country? Do you think it's, it's all about kind of working together? Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, homelessness is not just an urban problem. We have it also in the major towns of the, uh, around the, the country. And uh, for the countryside to try to help alleviate that problem is, is, is just, it, it's always going to help bridge the gap between town and country.